When it comes to productivity, using a calendar and being disciplined with the calendar is mission critical. And sadly enough, I haven't been getting it done. As you know, there's not one shortcut on this channel talking about calendar. And today we're fixing that. I'm going to be building out not only a shortcut, but I'm actually going to be leveraging that shortcut to help me become more disciplined with using my calendar, making it easy to access and making sure that that calendar gets open no matter what. Let me show you what I'm talking about. All right. So here we are on my iPad. And the first things we we need is two things one we need shortcuts so if you don't have it we're going to navigate over to the app store and we're going to install shortcuts just in case you found this video online we just type in shortcuts and this is what we want right here it's easy peasy the next one is we need your calendar of choice. So if you're just using calendar, built-in calendar, then it's already there. But for me, for this example, I'm going to actually be using Fantastical. And the reason why I'm using Fantastical is because honestly, I like it better. And this is Fantastical right here. So this is going to be the one that I'm using. So if you want to follow along, you can. If I'm not mistaken, Fantastical do have a free version. I'm on the paid version, but honestly, what I'm doing, I don't think requires the paid version at all. How's it going, Will here? On this channel, I teach you how to leverage automation and technology to boost your productivity and make creating content effortless. Let's talk automation. All right, so first things first, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually leave up out of here and we're going to just open up shortcuts. Now, I will be linking this shortcut below for you, so I'm gonna create it up under the share. Highly recommend, as always, you, you know, learn this stuff, learn how it works, so that way you can modify the shortcut as you see fit. So I'm just going to scroll down to my shortcuts folder, my shared shortcuts folder, and I'm going to create it in here. So I'm going to say plus and this shortcut, I think I'm going to name this. All right. So I named it my day view shared. I'm going to click on the icon because I want to change up the icon, give it a little bit more pizzazz. I'm going to make it orange. Let's see if they have a sun. They do. So I'm just going to grab that. And yeah, that's going to be it. The very first thing I want to do is I want to add a comment. The reason why I want to add a comment is because I don't be doing it. And I want to get in the habit of leaving comments. So when you open it up, you'll know what this is. So let me just do this really quickly. All right. So you can see it says this shortcut will grab your events for today and show you what's coming up next and give you an overview of your day ahead. All right. So the very first thing we want to do when we're dealing with shortcut, at least a day view is we want to make sure that we take the time out to figure out what information do we really want? Because here's the deal. If we just jump into this and try to do it off the cuff, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to have to go back and fix a lot of things. So to avoid that, we want to take the time out to create the text block first. And I know this sounds counterintuitive, but we're starting with the end result in mind. And then after we have that, we're we're going to be able to work our way backwards from there. All right, let me show you what I mean. All right, so here we are right here. So I'm going to ask for, I don't want to comment because I want this to show up. I want a text block. So first thing I know I wanted to say is, so I want mine to say, what's up, Will? All right, so as you can see, I put this in. It says, what's up, Will? You have X events. So this is, so we're going to have to pull the number of events we got for today on the, your calendar today. It's going to tell me the weather is currently, all right, with a high. So this is the high of whatever B is and a low of whatever C is. Then it says the chance of rain today is going to be D percent. So where you see these, these, we have to go in and change them out. Then you can see right here where it says your next upcoming event is it's going to give me the next upcoming event and then it's going to say you have f which is how many minutes before your next one your next event start today and then here is going to give me a bird's eye view of everything that's on my calendar for that day so this is where i'm starting this is what i wanted to do and the cool thing about this is now there are like it's not perfect because in some instances like you'll notice if you run this shortcut let's say you're at work and on your calendar it says you got eight hours and you four hours in you're gonna see where it says negative four hours when it comes to how much time to the next event i played around with it a lot but from what i can see without actually digging into some code there's no way that i can that i found to be able to correct that or fix that if you know definitely let us know in the comments below all right but other than that the shortcut is pretty spot on with the accuracy and all that other stuff so with this we're going to be using we're i think if i'm not mistaken we're going to be using 
using an if statement and we're definitely going to be using the if statement because of this right here we're going to duplicate this text box but when we get to that part we'll do it then but this shortcut will definitely allow you to learn a few things okay so let's jump in all right so in coding in shortcuts all of us the same we're going to build this shortcut out problem by problem meaning we want to start with getting this problem fixed right so it says you have x events on your calendar today so what i want to do is i'm going to do actually before i do this i want to tackle the weather and the only reason why is because most of this is the weather and i prefer for the weather to be pulled first because i feel like that's going to take the most time all right because that's actually going out to the internet so i'm going to to click on weather and I'm gonna get current weather so get current weather all right now for get current weather I'm gonna leave it at current location you can change it to whatever you want it to be but I really wanted to pull my current location wherever I'm at so the first thing we want to do and we're gonna be playing with a lot of variables like we could change this out a lot but we're not gonna do that because honestly we don't really need to do that we're just gonna use this one shortcut and keep it clean and we're gonna change it up by using variables so let me show you what I mean all right so you can see right here it says the weather is currently a so what I want to do is I want to delete I want to highlight that and I want to click on weather condition the weather is currently so I'm going to click on weather condition I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to say okay I want to get the temperature because that's what I want so the, this is the current temperature then with a high of B so now I want to highlight this one I want to highlight that I want to click on weather condition again and this time I'm getting the high so I'm going to click on high this time I'm getting the low so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to scroll down too low and then the chance of rain is going to be right here so i'm going to let's see here highlight that i'm gonna say weather condition i'm gonna scroll down to it doesn't say the chance of rain on here i think it's a precipitation so here go right here precipitation chance not amount we want chance so now what i want to do is get how many events i have so to do that i'm gonna step back up out of here and i'm gonna go to fantastic cow because that's my calendar of choice and for fantastic cow i'm gonna grab where is it show schedule so i'm gonna come over here i'm gonna drop that right in the middle because i want that to be above it i want the schedule to be below it now the reason why is because it runs top down so it's going to automatically get this information it's going to plug in all that stuff and then to grab my calendar is going to be super fast because it doesn't need to go to the internet to get that all right so i'm going to change this to current date which is a variable right here and i'm going to leave it like so next i want to say get item the reason why we want to get items is because we want to know how many it's saying your next upcoming event is and then it says right here it says you have x events on your calendar today the only way for us to know how many events we got on the calendar is if we count it so we're going to use a count which is right here and you can see it's counting items and it's show and schedule so now what i want to do is i want to change this to count now i can click right here just to make sure it's counting what is counting so i can see it can count characters words sentences or lines but we just want to count items all right we're going to keep it really simple and if we play this right now we'll see that if i go right here and say show show result show result is a great way for us to just be able to see what how far we've come so far so i'm gonna say play and then you can see right here where it says you have zero events on your calendar today the weather is currently 81 degrees with a high of 81 and a low of 49 the chance of it raining today is 39 percent so now you can see this is working now what i would do is i would say done and i could see right here i think it was like right here i need to add a space because it was all running together now let's jump over to my calendar because i'm pretty sure that i have events on my calendar today okay so here i am at my calendar i want to double check to see if i had anything on my calendar and today is june today is not june 10th so i'm not sure why i'm seeing that so if i click on today all right i see i don't have anything on here but oh you know what happened i need to reconnect calendar right quick that's why i'm not seeing anything so let me do that i'll be right back all right so we're back and i've got everything set up and we're just gonna play this one more time but before we do i noticed that this was showing when run i don't want it to do that so i'm gonna click play and there we go you have three events on your calendar today the weather is so we know this part works so now we good all right 
So I'm going to say done. And we can see it also gets output down there. Now we need to tackle, tackle this section right here, which is your next upcoming event is. So to do this, we're going to come back over to Fantastic Cal. We can click on it and we're going to use the show schedule. So I'm just going to actually we can use upcoming item. So I'm going to put that right there. And I have this right here. Next, what I want to do is I want to get date between because in order for us to so for this part right here, we're going to put that back down. I'm going to pull that back up. Actually, I'm going to leave out and come back in because shortcuts is acting a little wonky. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to scroll back down to shared shortcuts. I'm going to come back. All right. I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to actually type in something that's called do nothing. And I'm going to just drop this at the bottom. So that way it'll push up my shortcut. All right. So now I don't have to worry about it being all the way up here. And I'm going to just actually grab this keyboard and move it out the way. Now that's looking better. So what we want to do is we want to tackle this problem right here. Your next upcoming event is. Now it's a few ways we can do this. If I want to I can give this a variable but I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this and for upcoming event I'm going to find it we can select variable upcoming item and what I want to do is I want to change it to title because I, I want it to give me the what whatever's the title of that event you have f before your next event this is minute in order for us to solve this problem right here we have to do a few things with this and we're going to use the date to do that so get time between so get time between dates is what we're looking for. We're going to put that right there. We do want this to be current date and we want this to be upcoming event. And under minute, we could do minute or we could do total time. I found that I have better success with total time versus minutes. But you can try it and see which one works best for you. I'm going to switch it to total time. And now what I want to do is I want to change this out right here. F is going to be, we can click on variable. We can just put time between and where it says right here here the next event starts for today we're actually just going to change this to today's date to do that it's really easy we can select the variable and we can just actually we don't even have to select the variable but since we did it we can click right here we're going to highlight it and then we're going to look through here and get current date that's what we want right there now I'm just going to touch it with my finger because it appears to not be working. We're going to say done. So that way we can come back over here. It was expecting me to grab a magic variable, but I don't want to grab a magic variable. So I'm going to slide this over some. And you can see right here where it says current date. That's what we want. Now we can do however we want it to be. You can look right here at that example. It showed us what each one of these will look like. So if we do long, you can see what long look like. If we do none for time. You will see what it look like. I don't want a time, so I'm not going to have a time. If we do medium, you can see what that looks like. If we do short, you can see what that looks like. Now, personally, I want to do medium. Only thing long does is spell out the month for you. I don't need it to do that, so I'm going to do medium. All right. Now, we're going to tackle this in a second, but right now, we're going to push play. We're going to say done, and we need to go back and turn that off, but we can see where you can see right now it says your next upcoming event is main job, have seven hours. Now, what this is saying is I've been at work for seven hours and 38 minutes before your next event. So this says negative. So basically, if you look at my schedule, technically, I'm supposed to still be at work right now until three o'clock. And then from three o'clock, I'm supposed to have that travel time. And then from there, I'm supposed to be on my way to my next job. But you'll see that when we get to the bird's eye view. But that's, this is the one I'm talking about right here. I did not find a way to be able to change this and not have the main job pop up. So when you run the shortcut, for whatever reason, it's, it's not looking at the next event after the current event. It's looking ahead and it's seeing that, hey, you still want the same event in the next hour. So that's that's why it's doing this. If I figure out a way to get rid of that, which trust and believe I've been looking. But once I figure out a hack for that, I'm definitely going to share it with you. But for right now, this is how it is. But if we run this shortcut, like around three o'clock or something like that is going to show up. Okay, you got 45 minutes before you have to be at your next job. All right. So I'm going to say done. And now what I want to do is I want to come down here to where it says bird's eye view. Now, what I want this to do is I want to take each event that's, that is shows up here and I want those events to show up down here and I also want those events to make sure that they show each one line by line so in order to do that we got to use a repeat tag so we're going to do repeat with each and we're actually going to put it in between here 
and we're going to put it right there. Next, what I need is I need text, a text box. Now, I've I struggled with this part for the better part of maybe an hour. So I'm going to show you the easiest way I figured out how to do this. And if you know a better way, by all means, let us know in the comments below. All right. So first things first, with our repeat tag, we want to have the title. So the title is going to come from our event. So I'm going to say select variable. I wasn't paying attention. This is not what we want. We want to clear this. We want to come back over here, select variable, and we want to get, we want this to be focused on show schedule. All right. So we want to repeat the show schedule, which is right here. So first things first. We're going to say select variable, repeat item. We want it to be the title. Awesome. Next, what we want to do is we're going to say time. And so we're going to come right here and we're going to say start time. So what I want to do is I want to come back over here. I want to select that variable again, repeat item. And I'm going to scroll down to start date. And then over here, I'm going to select that variable again. I'm going to say repeat item. And I want to go to end date. Now we can click on this variable and we can see the start date. We can see the end date. So now what I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to change this to repeat results. And now it should give us a bird eye view of everything that's on our calendar for the day. So if I click play, now we can see that we have each one coming up. So main job is the title. You can see I'm there from, from 7 a.m. to 3. You can see third job is coming up at 345 till midnight. Then you can see a senior, Kevin got a senior prime coming up, which again is something that fell through the cracks because I wasn't paying attention to my calendar. This is why it's important for me to do what I'm doing now because I honestly had no idea that that was on the calendar. So I'm going to say done. And now if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, I can. So I can come down here and let's see here. Instead of having all of this right here, I'm going to say none. Actually, I want the time. So I'm going to, let's say, shorten that and I'm going to turn off the date. So I want the time. And then down here for this one, I want to turn off the date. <laughs> you can see it's popping up right now on my calendar. That's insane. And I want to shorten this and I want that to be shortened. Now, when we look at it, we click play and now it should be the way we want it to be. Exactly. So now you can see we have it exactly the way we want it. So first I'm going to say done. Now, the last thing I want to do is I actually want to create an alarm for this because here's the deal. Now that I have the shortcut, that's great. But me having a shortcut is not going to magically make me you know, start using this shortcut. It, it, it just doesn't work like that for me. So what I want to do is I want to tie this shortcut to my daily alarm, meaning I want to create an alarm specifically attached to this shortcut. I want that alarm to probably be around like maybe six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. Actually, I want it to be tied to my seven o'clock alarm. And the reason why is because that's an alarm that I always turn off. So I'm going to tie this shortcut to my seven o'clock, seven a.m. alarm. And when that go off, it's going to automatically trigger this shortcut to run, which is actually building the habit of me using this shortcut to the point where when it doesn't run, I done got so codependent upon it that if it don't run, I automatically go in and trigger it myself. That's the level of habit we're trying to get to. So Let's do that. All right. So here we go. Let's see here. We're going to leave up out of here. So this one says my day view shared. I'm not going to actually use that one. I'm going to actually use another one that I have up in here. This I think it's called the same thing in my day view. So let's just go to all shortcuts just to make sure that I'm correct on that. Let's see my day, my day one. No, is it my day? Might be my day. Yep. It's my day. All right. So this is the one that I'm going to do the automation on my day. So let's see here. I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to click on automation. I'm actually going to set this one here, but just understand I'm going to go back and set it on my phone. So I'm going to say time. I'm going to actually, I'm not going to say time. I'm going to say alarm and I'm going to say existing alarm. Now, this one doesn't have the alarm that I need, but we're going to use it with this one. Just know I'm going to deactivate this one and put it on my main on my phone alarm. After that, I'm going to say run immediately because I don't want it to confirm the run. I'm going to say next. Then I'm going to say my day, which is right here. And now when my 2 p.m. alarm is stopped, meaning I have to stop it, this shortcut will run. And honestly, that's how easy it is 
to use shortcuts to start creating habits for yourself. Now, again, with this one, I'm honestly not going to leave this turned on, but I wanted you to see how easy it is. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna actually go to my phone and do it because for whatever reason, our automations don't switch over from device to device, at least as far as I know. Mine's never done. If someone else is due, then they need to put me on, let me know how they did it because my automations are per device. So if I create an automation on my iPad, it doesn't translate over to my phone. I'm not sure why, but I don't know. So with that being said, that's how you do it. That's how you build out this shortcut. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up so I'll know you like these type of videos. And as a sidebar, I hope my audio has gotten tremendously better because I know when I had my, I grabbed the, I set up this to make it a little bit better of a shot. But when I was actually using my task cam, my audio was crisp and it was on point, but I recently switched from my Tascam over to my Sony, which is the, I guess it's the XLR mount for the top of the camera because I want my audio to go directly into the camera so there's no sync drift. And I know my last few videos have been very, very, very difficult for me to edit. So if my audio sounds better, well, I hope it do. I haven't heard this audio yet, but I actually took the time out to dial in my settings. So I'm hoping it sounds better. But with that being said, all the same, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. I'll catch you in the next video. Till next time. Later.